Today we have with us Christine Hadi Shabed. She is a practitioner who works with Kundalini Yoga, Reiki, brain spotting, energy codes, sound healing with crystal singing bowls, and spiritual response therapy. She started on this path to help her son after he was born with some challenges. Now she uses this newfound passion to help others. There's three parts to this interview. Part one discusses her background and delves into energy codes. Uh, there is a short meditation and exercise about energy codes. And we also talk about sound healing as well. Part two, around the 29 minute mark, is about being aware enough to try something different and step out of your comfort zone, even if you're a bit skeptical. Part three, 38 minute mark, is the mind bending possibility of remote healing, its accessibility and effectiveness. And I hope you enjoy it. Hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you so much. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if you had an awareness to go, you know, something, something isn't working for me and I need to figure out what that is. And I need to explore something that will help shift me. There's enough for everybody. And there is something for everybody. A lot of these practitioners, uh, yourself included, mm -hmm. you know, if you wanted to reach out to someone, like you were saying, you were working to someone on the other side of the world. Yeah. It, you don't have to be on their table. So it's extremely easy access. Yes. Um, it can be very inexpensive. Yeah. You can learn to do this stuff yourself. Yep. You can do it on yourself and you yep. can do it on others and yep. you can do it on others on the other side of the world. Yeah. Like you do on yeah. others on the other side of the world. Yeah. Um, so it's really exciting. Yes. If you open up to it. I, I do want to get a, a little better idea of like what you do these days. What, what is, what, what are some of your practices? What do I do? So I am. Okay. So I, I mean, I, it's taken me really my son, he just turned 18. So it has been a process of 18 years, honestly, of trying to figure out what it is that I want to do with my life. Right. right. This is like the second part of my life. I had him when I was 40 up until then, I, I had a certain life, right? I mean, I was in the dance theater world, and that literally was my entire life. And then once I had him, things kind of changed, as sometimes they do after you have a, a child. And so it has taken me 18 years to kind of figure out um, what I am doing. Like, what am I doing? And so what are you going to do when you grow up? <laughs> right. I know people are always asking these kids, like people are asking my son, what do you want to do when you, you know, when you get out of college, what do you, and he's like, I don't know. And I said, you know what, honey, it is totally okay not to know. Cause I'm 56 and I'm still figuring it out. You know, there's no right or wrong in, in making a decision and going, you know what, this really isn't working for me. So I'm going to go in a different direction that I'm going to right. do something that makes me happier or makes me feel better. There's nothing wrong with changing your mind. And I don't think right. people know that. I think people think that they can't, once they make a decision, they have to stick with that. And that's right. not they, they got to hit the 20 year mark. So they get right. Their, uh... <laughs> right. Right. So I, over the years I have done things like, um, SRT, which is called spiritual response therapy, and that works with the Akashic records. I don't know if you're familiar with that or any A of the bit. listeners will be, uh -huh. which has been awesome. And then I um, did Kundalini yoga, which I still do. I still do SRT. I still do Kundalini yoga. And then through the yoga, that's how what got me into the crystal singing bowls. Mm, okay. It's doing sound because um, they would play gongs in the class. And I really loved the gong and I loved sound, but um, I don't know. I just couldn't get into the, I, I didn't desire to play the gong, but I wanted to do something with sound. And then I found somebody who played crystal singing bowls and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is what I want to do. I want to do this. So, nice. um, and then through that, I, you meet people, right. I met somebody who did Reiki, which was very, um, uh, important in my life and my son's life. So I learned how to do Reiki and I, I had to learn to do all these things because, I couldn't afford to pay people to take my son like every week, right. To, to, right. to do this work. So I had to learn how to do it. Um, I do things like brain spotting Reiki. And then um, several years ago, I found Dr. Sue again through a friend of mine. 
um, who does the energy codes work. And for me, that just kind of really clicked in my head and made sense to me. And so I've kind of been focusing on um, the energy codes and Dr. Sue's work and my sound healing. So that's kind of what I've been focusing on for the past three years. Well, uh, of the uh, couple items that you had mentioned, um, the, the codes work, the energy codes work is probably what I know least about. Oh, so oh, well, good. So I would, I would love to hear a bit about that and how you, you know, got into that. And from what I remember, we had, you know, you had a little discussion before, um, um, because you had your son mm -hmm. in and around that time period. That's how you ended up going into a lot of these uh, more um, holistic practices. Yeah. Um, and I'd love to hear a little bit more about that as well. Yeah. Well, after he was born, um, I suffered with postpartum depression, which at the time I didn't know that that's what that was. And so I just knew that I was really struggling with being a mom and, um, <laughs> you know, being a mom and I have this child that cries all the time and is just never sleeps. And, um, it was just a very challenging time. And, um, so that's again, through people, right. You, through the grace of God, I found somebody to help me through that. And so that was where the Kundalini yoga came in and the spiritual response therapy. And then when he was seven years old, he was diagnosed with epilepsy. And we knew something had been going on for years, but we just didn't know what it was. He wasn't having like grand mal seizures. He did have those, but that was later. Um, but we just didn't know that he was having these seizures. So right. um, when he was seven, he actually had a couple grand mal seizures. We took him to the hospital, did testing. He has epilepsy. So now that gives me a new focus, right? I have to focus on something to help my child in right. my mind. <laughs> I was like, what can I do as a mom to help him maybe help support his body better? Maybe help. I mean, I don't know. I'm just grasping at straws. I'm thinking maybe I can maybe help his brain build new pathways to maybe um, become stronger or, you know, process things better. I was just looking, I literally was looking for anything to help support his body in any way that I could. And that led me down the path where I am today. I, I have no, I know quite a few people that uh, because their their children, uh, because of the treatments that they that their children needed, that's what put them on this this new path. Yeah. Um, yeah. You become possessed. I mean, it's your child, and you want to do everything that you can to to help them. I mean, especially when they're so young. Right. Yeah. So, how does the uh, the energy code or the the coding? Mm -hmm. Energy play. codes. Mm -hmm. Energy code. Okay. So it's it's a it's a it's a practice or principles that you can do like every day, and it helps you become more in tune with your authentic self and um, have a better awareness of who you are, who you are as this energy being. And what does that even mean? Like that's a lot of words. Like I don't even know what that right, means. Right. right? Okay. So, so one way that I describe it is think of that you are living in a house and you come to realize that perhaps maybe this house is still a great house, but it's just not serving you anymore. Like you might need to do some remodeling. So you bring in this contractor and you talk with this contractor about what it is that you want to do. And so the contractor says, well, let's start in the room that you use the most. And let's say that room is your kitchen. Okay. So you're going to remodel the kitchen. Well, what do you want to do in the kitchen? And what is it that you want to achieve? Well, maybe I want to create more counter space so I can prep and cook my food better. And oh gosh, I'd really love to enlarge my pantry so I can not only house my food supplies in there, but maybe create some more storage and put my spices in there. So when I need to reach for them, they're very easily accessible. And when we're done with this whole space, you are going to have a great cohesive space that you can use very efficiently and feel really good about. So you, we are the same way, right? We, our beings, our, our physical bodies are the same way. And so it, when we do the energy codes, it helps reroute the energy in the body to become more efficient and more readily available to you when you really need it in times of stress or hmm. um, stressful times. I'm just going to say stressful times. Okay. And, um, and it helps you to become more tapped into the true essence of who you are. You're really an 
an energetic being living here on this planet. And it helps you tune into that. And by doing that, you become more aware and more um, grounded and really who you are and you get to live your, your true authentic self or your soulful self as Dr. Sue likes to say. So I've heard people talk about um, creating new neural pathways, Yeah, um, mm-hmm. you know, within the brain. Mm-hmm. Um, is that what you're talking about? Or are you basically talking about new energetic pathways, not just in the brain, but also the body itself? Yeah, well, it's both actually it's, it's, um, it's both because what you need to, because by doing the, um, the energy codes, what it does is it helps you understand that your brain is here to serve you. It's not the boss of you. It doesn't tell you what you need to do. It's here to serve you. So really we live from our heart. We, we want to, we want to tune into our heart center and we want to live from there. And a lot of times um, it's very easy to build up walls, right? Because, you know, right. when you're little, it doesn't take much, right? Somebody says, Oh, why did you do that? Or you're, you're dumb or that looks stupid or whatever. Right. I mean, people tease you and it's easy to build up those walls and, start to think that your brain is really in charge. Right. So building these new energetic pathways helps free up the energy and helps create new pathways to help you understand that you train the brain to work for you, to, to help you, to help guide you, not make the decisions for you, but help guide you. So it's a tool. Your brain becomes, your thoughts become a tool that you can help use. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So how do you go about actually making the changes in the, the, the pathways? Yeah. Well, there's several, dif- there's, there's how, several, how do I ways. get a new Island in my kitchen? Yes. How yes. do I tear down this wall? <laughs> yes. Yes. So there's several different ways. And one of um, the main ways that um, it, that uses the energy codes is, is called central channel breathing. And what okay. it does is it taps into your seventh and your first chakra. And that's kind of like, um, I'm going to say it's kind of the foundation. It's, we're going to be okay. laying the foundation using the central channel breathing. See how this all works together. Isn't that fun? Okay. Yes. And, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. and um, so, so one way to do that is um, we can do it right now and, and we'll see how we feel. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's okay, do it. Great. So um, sitting comfortably and you can visualize a bright light, either two inches above your head or two feet above your head, whatever is comfortable for you, whatever you can visualize. And you have this beautiful bright light, this bright, beautiful healing light. And you're gonna visualize it coming in through the top of your head, through the center of your brain, through the center of your throat, through the center of your heart, through the center of your torso and into your belly. And then take a breath in. And as you exhale, it's going to go straight down into the earth. It can go two feet into the earth, two inches into the earth, however far you can make it go. And then you're going to inhale up from the earth into the belly. And as you exhale, you're going to send that energy again up through the central channel. So that's up through the center of the torso, through the center of the heart through the center of the throat, the center of the brain, and out the top of the head, like a little whale spout out and about. And you just repeat that process again, inhaling from overhead, bringing the energy in through the central channel, into the belly, and exhaling into the earth, and then inhaling up from the earth into the belly, and exhaling through the center of the body, out the top of the head, and seeing the energy come out like a little whale spout out and around you. So that's your central channel breathing, and that activates your seventh chakra and your first chakra. And that's the foundation, I would say. And that's just one way um, to begin the process. Okay. Yeah. Very neat. So how exactly does it um, activate a chakra? I mean, I I am visualizing and kind of breathing through the different chakras. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, how, how does how does it activate it? <laughs> well, by by actually, you just you I mean, you just said it by visualizing it. So okay. where um, where your attention goes, energy flows, right? That's true, absolutely. So, so if you're visualizing, and even if you don't even know what the chakras are, I mean, intuitively, our bodies, I mean, our bodies know how to function and work. We don't really even think about it, right? So. Right. So if you're just sitting here and you're like, okay, I'm going to visualize coming through the center of the top of my head. And I'm just going to visualize coming through the center of my body. It's like running along the base of your spine, right? And so you're just going to visualize this. You don't even really even know that there's chakra centers, but you're just visualizing this energy come in through the body, through this straight line. It can't help but start to activate those chakras because you're sending the energy there. And whether gotcha. you whether you realize it or not, that's what you're doing. Gotcha. Yeah. And by by breathing through those chakras or into those chakras, um, it's it's energizing those particular energetics of the that's body. That's right. That's right. Gotcha. Yeah. And so, how does that help? Like, if you breathe into uh, your energetics of your body, how does that help you as a person? There's several different types of breathing patterns that Dr. Sue does. And each one is going to serve a different purpose. And actually, okay. if you want to be technical about it, it's going to work with each chakra, right? Okay. Fair so enough. for example, so this is just activating this central channel breathing. This is just bringing your awareness to your body. So by visualizing, hopefully you start to become aware of you of you being inside this physical body, because the whole thing about Dr. Sue's this, this, this work, the energy codes is about embodying, embodying who we are. Like a lot of us try, um, a lot of us think, oh, I want to do meditation so I can become in tune with my higher self. And I can become more in tune with um, my spiritual self. Right. And I totally get that because I did that for, for many, many years. Like Oh, I can't get it. I'm just not getting it. Right. I'm, right. I, I want to be more connected to my high self. And Dr. Sue says, really, the key is we, we don't really need to be connected to that because we already are that we are already these spiritual beings. We are already the connected to our high self. It's automatic, but our brain thinks that we are disconnected. Right. So by doing these breathing patterns, again, it's just one way to connect. It's going to help you tune into. It's like taking yourself and putting you inside of yourself, if that makes any sense. And realizing that I am a physical being. I am a spiritual, I am a spiritual being, but I'm a physical being here on this planet. I'm a spiritual being here on this, in a physical being on this planet. There you are. You're a spiritual <laughs> being in a physical yeah. body yes. here on this planet. On this planet. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so by the whole, so by, by thinking that you're changing, first of all, your process of thinking, right? Okay. And so by doing that, then you become more aware. It's like you become more um, aware of like what you're doing. And if you become more aware of what you're saying and and what you're feeling and what you're thinking and how you're reacting to things. We all have stories. We have the stories. And so we, we start to live from these stories. And because these stories we tell ourselves, it limits us. Yes. So, when we, so when we start to think, when we make a shift and we start to think, I really am a spiritual being living in this physical body. And because we are a spiritual being, we are all that is. And all that is, is accessible to us. And so when we understand that everything that is happening to us is actually serving us, and it actually might be putting us, oh, well, maybe I didn't get that job because it's going to lead me, because it led me to this job. I'm, I'm sure, have you ever had a situation where you look at in the past and you're like, oh my gosh, if... If I, right. if I didn't take that, then this would have never happened. Right. Everything happens for a reason and it has a purpose. Everything honestly has a purpose. And I totally get like, I was raised thinking that I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like I get it. You know, people say it all the time, but that's the actual, like you actually understand that it, that is really true, that everything is serving you for a purpose. And 
you understand that. So you're like, well, this didn't quite work out for the way I had planned it. Yet I'm sure I know that there's a purpose for that. And it's going to lead me somewhere else that I need to be, or it's going to guide me where I need to be. So there's no wrong thing, right? It's all divine. Everything is divine that's happening. And it's the brain that turns it into something else. Right. So I'm, I'm a big Tony Robbins fan. And one thing he says quite often is life happens. Um, what if life happened for you and not to you? Yes, that's right. Um, Same thing. But you take it another step further. What if you actually were to embody that message? That's right. Rather than just being something that's kind of profound and kind of cool words and makes sense. But what if you could actually like experience that perspective? Right. And um, by centering into your body, into your energetics, it gives you a little better understanding of that whole concept. Yeah. It changes it. It changes your whole come from Um, it just changes your whole outlook on life. It really just changes everything. Everything's an empowering lesson. Yeah. And it's, and that's what it's about. It's about really embodying that. That's what her work is, is really embodying that understanding that. And when you do understand that you can enjoy your life better, you can actually create the life that you want to create. In, gotcha. from that space. Again, everything is serving you. So, so you just gotcha. under, so it's. So you learn to appreciate everything rather than getting yes. pissed off at everything. Yes. At the end of the day, there's really <laughs> no stress because everything has been serving you and um, everything is divine. Everything is as it should be. Right. And there are times that are stressful. Yes. I'm not, you know, I'm not disputing that. Yes. Things happen. These tools help you go, Okay. I'm going to take a breath right now. I am going to breathe in my central channel and I'm going to become grounded and centered and know that this is all divine and this is all working in my favor. And it just helps calm you down and it helps you come from a different perspective. And it makes you, um, it helps you to perhaps maybe handle the situation in a different manner, coming from a different place, Right. right? Instead of getting all like, you know, maybe ugly or crazy or yelling, you are more centered, you're calm, you can think better, your reactions are different, your words mm-hmm. are different, right? Right. You're not in that um, flight response. Right. That's place. right. That's right. And that I tell you, that's kind of what Reiki does for me. Mm. Um, when I, you know, do it on myself, if I have, well, I, I do it quite often, usually at the end of the day, but if I'm mm-hmm. in kind of a funky place, it really shifts your conscious consciousness. It, so you can see things from a very different light mm-hmm. um, rather than being in the piss, pissed off state, worrying about a really annoying issue. Right. You can come from a uh, empowering state mm-hmm. and you can just kind of set that issue aside and you just, you know, that issue then becomes very small. Yeah. And it, it can help you get to the root of what's really happening. You know, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've heard the saying that life is a mirror image too, you know, right. so you can really get to the root of what's, what is, what's really going on here. What is it that I need to see, or what is it that I need to hear, or what is it that I need to speak? But I think this would be, this work would be a great tool. Like I would love to be able to teach this tool, these tools to, to kids in school, because School is so stressful. I mean, it is mm-hmm. so much more stressful today right. than when I went to school or I'm sure when you went to school and I would love to be able to pass along this information to, to middle school, to school, people in school. Right. I mean, there's no limit, no, no age limit. Well, I'm still convinced that, um, that I, so I'm a musician myself. Oh. I, I play the drums. Awesome. And I think I gravitated toward the drums. Mm -hmm. I mean, aside from the fact that they're cool, right? Yeah, right. But I gravitated toward them because of the um, the the sound healing. I mean, I loved being surrounded by the the gong and the timpani and even the bass drum. Even you know, the bass drum was one of the lamest instruments to play because you basically every once in a blue moon (laughs) you you hit it. Right. So from a technical standpoint, it was not cool at all. But to stand by it and yeah. to feel that energy, it was um, really an experience. So for that reason, I didn't mind playing that. I, you know, the timpani was grand. And of course, now I play the set. 
but it, um, but those big drums and the gong, you know, every once in a real blue moon, you would you'd be able to play the gong, and that was always fantastic. And uh, that was my sound healing mm -hmm. from my youth. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely gravitate to all of that, and it's really interesting to me. You know, they they say that these crystal bowls are many of them are, are tuned to the chakras. You know, I, I've heard different stories about people getting emotional mm -hmm. based on the particular bowl. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was kind of, you know, it was interesting stories, but I, I got a little taste of that. Um, mm. It may have also been a Tony Robbins event, but I'm, I'm not really sure. I've been to quite a few sound healings, but this particular person was talking about, um, and it was large bowl. It was about a, um, a crystal bowl that was tuned to a heart chakra. Oh, mm -hmm. And man, it got me like, it really got me emotional. And mm -hmm. which is, um, it was a bit bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was really bizarre for me because yeah. uh, it, it opened me up and yeah. I, I felt it. Yeah. And the other bowls, they felt very cool. And I'm sure they were doing plenty of good, I guess. Yep. Yep. But they didn't hit me the same way as that one bowl that was supposedly attuned to my heart chakra um, hit me. Sure. And so, yeah, I mean, there's, I guess there's a resonant frequency to your heart chakra and your heart chakra can make you open up. And I just yeah, think I that think, was very, yeah, very cool. I think, um, I think, well, I mean, all the chakras have a purpose, right? They're all amazing and they're all great. Um, but from what I've experienced, a lot of people really have uh, so they, they protect that heart chakra so much. And um I would say that when that breaks open, that that is a very powerful thing because that, I mean, you want to live from your heart. You want to come from your heart. You know, that's, right. that's where you want to live. And so when that breaks open, it's very, very powerful. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And that for me is where I um, store a lot of my stress. Yeah. Um, and then of course, yeah, a lot of emotional stuff too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So when that opens up, it's uh uh, yeah, it can be a big dam. That's yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I have many people that, um, it's, it's, uh, it's funny, not funny, like, you know, like hilarious, funny, but people, <laughs> they always say to me, they're like, Oh my God, why am I crying? I'm just, I have so many people that cry. Like, is this normal? Is this, they ask me, is this, is this normal? Why am I crying? And it's, yes, it's very normal. This is, I, I don't even know if normal is the right word, but it's typical. Right. We'll say that. Gotcha. And, um, uh, yes, it's very typical because again, I think we have so many blocks and so many walls up, whatever word you want to say mm -hmm. that when, you know, the beautiful thing about sound is that you can't resist the sound. You can't because it permeates every cell in your being. You don't just hear it with your ears, right? It hits every cell in your body like that big drum, right? Drumming is magical, first of all. Drumming is amazing. And so it it just, it it um, what's the word? Like inundates, I don't even know if that's the right word, but it just saturates your body. Right. And so your body's like, I can't resist this anymore. I have to just surrender and let it hmm. go. I have to let it flow through me. And um, that's why I love sound so much is because it can just be very, very healing. And, um, and it's, you know, it's fairly simple. You know, the person right. doesn't have to do anything, right? They can lay there, sit there. They can just experience it. Oh. You had mentioned that your, um, a lot of your family background was in, in medicine, was medical. Yeah, my mom was a nurse. I had medical people in my family. I mean, if you would have, honestly, I mean, that's why this is such a huge change for me because, um, I mean, it was just never in my like I was one of those people that would be like, what are they talking about? Like, right. yes. they're crazy. These people yes. are crazy. I don't, yes. none of this is real. Like what are they, right. they're just making it up. And I mean, I, I, I totally was, I, would have been one of those people. Yes. I, I definitely was one of those people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's why this it's impacted me so much because right. this, so much of this stuff was not part of my belief system. No. Um, I mean, sound healing, that's fine. You know, I, I probably would have been like, okay, well, I, I do like hanging out around the timpani and the right. bass drum. So maybe there's something to that. But when you start getting into 
like energetics, like right. Reiki and right. some of this other stuff that can get, I mean, I still think it's a bit bizarro, um, no, it is. but I'm I not denying agree. that it works. It, it absolutely right. works. Right. Um, but it certainly would be something that I would uh, point and laugh at. Absolutely. Um, you know, just a couple of years ago. And, but, you know, through actually stepping out of my comfort zone or being exposed to certain experiences you know, there's no, no denying what I experience, seen, um, you know, embodied. And right. now I'm kind of like, Hey, so, well, this is real. Right. That's, that's crazy. Right. It really helps a lot of people. Right. That's very cool. Right. Um, it doesn't need to cost a lot. In fact, right. you can learn a lot of this stuff yourself. Sure. That's awesome. Why don't more people know about it? I know. And a lot of it's so simple, right? It's very, it can be very, very simple. And, you know, that's like, um, I mean, I, a lot of times I do, like, like I said earlier, I look at things like, I don't know if I really believe that, but I'll try it. Right. Right. I'll try it. Like, I remember when I started Kundalini yoga, the stuff they're telling me, I'm like, I don't believe any of this stuff. I don't believe any of it, but I am. It's like, I reached a point where I was so desperate Mm-hmm. I was in such a low, like, I mean, I was just struggling so much and, um, you know, I just, I had to try, I had to try. So I'm like, I don't believe anything that they're telling me, right. but I'm going to just do it. I'm going to do it and see what happens because a lot of these things are experiential. Right. And I get it all the time when I play my bowls and people are like, Oh yeah, you play bowls. That's, that's nice. Or, you know, that's, that's right, fun right, or right. And I'm like, yeah, it is fun. And then they experience it and their whole tune changes, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, wow, that was really amazing. Now, how does that work exactly? And what is that? And how does it do that? Because they experienced it, right? Right. You can talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. But when you actually experience some sort of shift or change, that's when the light bulb goes off. And you're like, I think there's something to this. I need to explore more. I need to learn more about this. It's all good. That's what I'm finding out. And there's <laughs> yeah. so many. I mean, yeah. yeah. And yeah. there's just so many. There's so many thousands yeah. of different modalities out there. Yeah. And um, there's not one size fits all, right? That's the beautiful thing. There's not one. You know, this energy codes work isn't any better than perhaps maybe Reiki. Maybe you find Reiki more efficient or more effective for you than breathing or maybe sound healing. Oh, that just really works for you. And, you know, Reiki is like, that doesn't really do anything for me. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I I use this, um, this saying, it comes from finding, it comes from the movie Finding Nemo and the movie Finding Nemo. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but there's a line that says, (laughs) (laughs) there's a line that um, he says, um, this is like all water leads to the ocean, right? So I'm like all healing, all of this healing leads to, to the ocean, right? It all leads to one place and everybody's journey is going to be different, but Mm. we're all going to get there and there's no right or wrong way to get there you are going to find what works best for you. And maybe this is going to work for you for, you know, maybe it'll work for you for like three years. And then you're like, you know what? I feel like I need to do something else. And then you can still use this, but maybe you're going to explore something else new, you know, and maybe that might shift you a little bit more or might give you the boost that you need. You know, there's, there's enough for everybody and there is something for everybody. That's Very the well said. part. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And that's, you know, that's what I'm, I'm trying to do is put together a very large, um, diverse crowd of many different practitioners, many different modalities. Mm -hmm. And I'd love for people to just kind of be like, I, this one looks interesting. Maybe not this one, Uh, this Mm -hmm. one looks, well, that's intriguing. Um, and just to have their choice, I'd like it to be kind of like a candy store. Yeah. Um, and where they can experiment. Yes. Because at the end of the day, really, that's what it is. You are experimenting. I mean, you know, it's taken me 18 years to get to where I am today, right? I have experimented with many different things. There have been many different modalities that I have, that I have experimented. The beautiful thing is, you know, my, my focus was my, my child, right? I'm like, oh, I have to, I have to help my child. But the beautiful thing is in the process of doing that, I have also, I've, I've had to know the work. I've had to learn the work. I've experienced the work. So I've, I've been working on myself inadvertently, not even really knowing that, 
And through these 18 years, you learn a lot, right? And some things I've really liked, some things I don't, some things I want to learn more about. Some things are like, well, this is good, but I don't really want to learn it. You know, it's like, but it all, these all become tools that you can, that you can reference in your toolbox. And it's just, it's great to have all that available to you. Yeah. I think we, if we can all just knock our stress level down a bit, yeah, increase our health just a yeah. bit, mm-hmm. um, you know, we would be in a very different place right now. All yes, of us. I agree. I agree. Well, that's the beautiful thing. These tools can help you do that. And um, it's just finding the best, the one that you resonate with the most. Right. There's, like you said, you, you have a lot of people. There is something out there for, for everyone. There really, really is. They just have to kind of explore and find it. And, and well, you kind I, I think of that's know. the trick. You know, you, it's, it's hard to actually, if you've lived in a particular box yeah. or a particular way for X number of years, yep. what gets you to step out of that box, that your comfort zone? And I mean, for you, it was your son. Yeah. Right. And, yep. um, but how do we get people to more easily want to just say, huh, let's try something different. Right. This is a strange website. Let's click on one of these people. <laughs> yeah, let's look at, let's explore this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think what happens is, I mean, wouldn't it be nice if um, you had an awareness to go, you know, something, something isn't working for me and I need to figure out what that is. And I need to explore something that will help shift me. Right. I have found a lot of people in order to make a change in their life, it usually takes something, I don't want to say dramatic, but some sort of an event to shift, right? So, you know, yeah. sometimes it's a traumatic event that makes you shift. And, For um, me, it was the uh, real estate market crashing and yeah. um, and a divorce all at the same time. Yes. Okay. That's a lot. <laughs> so, so my world crashed and I was yep. like, oh my gosh. Yeah. What the hell am I supposed to do? <laughs> right. And I think, I think it was um, Wayne Dyer. I heard this years ago, but I think, I'm not sure if it was Wayne Dyer that I heard it from, but he said, you know, if you don't pay attention to life, life will get your attention. Mm, like and, um, and I, I have found that to be very, very true. Right. So I want to try to pay attention to life and make everything, you know, with, with ease and, and make my transitions with ease and joy and grace. And, and, and I don't want to have to struggle and suffer and in, um, in order to make a change, I want to be aware of it. You know what I mean? I want to make conscious aware decisions. So tell me a little bit about remote treatment. Um, I had that written down and how that applies to energy work and what your thoughts are about it. Yeah. Uh, well, you can, you know, energy is energy, right? There's no, there's walls do not limit energy, right? It's, it's constantly out there. So that's the beautiful thing about doing energy work. I'm sure that you've experienced it with Reiki or, you know, maybe you haven't, um, you know, you can do Reiki, you can do distance Reiki, you can do energy work anywhere. That's the beautiful thing. I work with people. Actually, I, I have had the, uh, I have been able to work with people actually on the other side of the world via zoom, which I would have never done before this pandemic. Right. So it's been amazing because energy is energy. Energy is limitless. It is limitless. There is no, yeah, it's really hard to get your head around though. I'll tell I know. you the, the first time I had um, it done through zoom and that, well, I guess, what was it? I don't know if zoom was around back then, but it was some sort of virtual virtual thing. It was probably like eight years ago. I could act, you know, I, I, I asked her like, where are you working? She says, I'm working in your solar plex. And I, I say to myself, yes, you are. Yeah. And it felt to me like she was getting her thumb from the inside of my yeah. belly mm-hmm. and moving it around. I mean, it was yeah. really, she, she was, or is exceptional. Um, I mean, I, 95% of the time I feel it remotely. That's awesome. But hers, it felt like a thumb was like whirling around <laughs> okay. in my intestines. It was crazy. <laughs> and it was the first time I ever had it done. Yeah. So it was even crazier. I was right. like, how could this possibly be? That's affirming. Um, oh, oh, absolutely. It was. <laughs> I mean, 
I, I thought she was a little crazy when she's like, well, we could just do it, you know, virtually. I'm like, sure. How do you do energy work virtually? She says, yeah. well, that's kind of the way it works. Right. Okay. I know. You can't and really then, explain it. <laughs> and I was, yeah, and I, and truly, I was like, so where are you working? She's like, yeah, I'm, I'm working on your solar plex. I'm like, yeah, I, well, I feel. Is that your thumb in my solar plex? What's going, <laughs> what's going on? And then she'd shift and I could feel, you know, I'd ask her, I'm like, are you working in my heart chakra? She's like, I am working. Yes, I'm working around your chest. And I'm like, I could feel that. How am I feeling that? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Who, who are you? Like, what, how are you? How are you doing this? How I mean, because this, this was working? all new to me. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's what's very cool about, you know, even the site that I'm putting together, a lot of these practitioners, uh, yourself included, mm-hmm. you know, if you wanted to reach out to someone, like you were saying, you were working to someone on the other side of the world. Yeah. It, you don't have to be on their table. That's no. not, it, it's, so it's extremely easy access. Yes. Um, it can be very inexpensive. Yeah. You can learn to do this stuff yourself. Yep. You can do it on yourself and you yep. can do it on others and yep. you can do it on others on the other side of the world. Yeah. Like you do on yeah. others on the other side of the world. Yeah. Um, so it's really exciting. Yes. If you open up to it. Yes. And that's what it's all about is just yeah. being like, okay, am I going to take that step and try it? Maybe, maybe I'll just, for shits and giggles. Right. <laughs> let's, let's, and let's you know, I, I will tell you this, like when I, um, when I first started trying to find stuff to help my son, um, the first question I would ask, well, what is it? How does it work? And then I would say, what if it doesn't work? Like, will it harm him in any way? No. Okay. Count me in. Do you know what I mean? Like what's right. the worst case scenario? Nothing will happen. Nothing will shift. Right. So then I would always go first and get a first treatment so I could experience it, see what it was. And he was very, even though he was young, I mean, he wanted to know what was happening, what people were going to do. So I would, so then I would explain it to him. They're going to put your hands on you, or you're going to look in a mirror, whatever, whatever we were doing. Right. And um, I mean, so if it's not going to harm me, then why not give it a try? Like, what's the worst thing? Nothing. What's the best thing? Oh my God, maybe I will feel a shift. Maybe I will feel something. It worked for you. And, and so many of these modalities, they work with like regular Western medicine. So if you have to get yes. physical work done or, yep. you know, broken arm or, yep. you know, even if you take medication, yep. this will help relieve. It yep. can help relieve yes. um, many of those other symptoms that might be brought on by medications or whatever it is you're going through. But right. um, you're right. It, 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 there's no, not that I'm aware of that there's any harm that can be done as a result. Right. Um, so, but there's a whole lot of relief that can be experienced. Right. So right. just sandwich it, you know, you, do your Western medicine. Yes. And do this. Yes. And see what happens, see what you know, happens. see what happens, be open to going, you know, I don't, you know, maybe, maybe for example, like, um, I don't know, maybe with Reiki, it might take, like I've worked with, with cancer patients okay. and, um, you know, they felt relief the first time, you know, but the second time, oh, they were able to really relax or sleep better. Or sometimes it takes more than one treatment. So you have to be open to going, okay, well maybe, or even the sound healing, the, the, the crystal bowl, sometimes people are like, oh, that was really great, but they don't really feel the effects until maybe a day or two later, you know, okay. until they really allow the sound to really permeate in their being, you know, or right. they feel it, but then why am I still feeling the effect two, three days later? This is awesome. You know? Right. So you just, I mean, I don't know what else to say other than you just really have to be open to experimenting and trying different things. And if you do something one time, I mean, again, your body knows, you totally know. If you do this and you're like, this isn't working for me, I I don't really like it. That is fine. Move on to something else. But know that there's something there. There is, you will find something that will benefit you, that you will like, that will help you in some way. There's so much out there. 